Hello everyone. So, we have reached almost the at the end of this course evaluation of textile material. In the last class, we have discussed the bending related characteristics and how to measure the bending behavior of textile material and cantilever principle is the most popular most widely used principle and if the fabric is very flexible like knitted fabric and we have mentioned we can use other methods of measurement that is a heart loop method, ring loop method and PR loop method as we have already discussed for limpy fabric like loose knitted fabric and L is the length of strip L 0 we have discussed it is a the it is undistorted length of loop that is the distance between grip and the farthest point and after hanging on its own weight the distance there will be some distortion and that distance becomes L 1 L L is more than L 0 and the deflection that is the stiffness is calculated based on the difference D is L minus L 0 as we have discussed and this for ring loop L 0 is nothing but that is the distance from one point to another point grip point to for that is nothing but a diameter okay. diameter of the loop and which is L by pi. So, this is the way we can uh, express okay. and from by if we know the L 0 value and if we know the deflection D the difference then we can calculate the bending length using this formula where function of theta is L cos theta by tan theta to the power 1 third. So, here using this function of theta for a theta equal to here in case of loop ring loop the theta is 157 multiplied by d by L 0 and if we know this value deflex only we should know the deflection. If we simply we, if we know the deflection value as in the last class we have mentioned and we can calculate the bending length. Okay. Similarly, for pure loop if we know the deflection only the deflection and function of theta is same here and then we can calculate the bending length. Similarly, for heart loop okay, using this formula. Okay. Now, the next characteristic is shear characteristics. Now, shear is a characteristic which is unique for textile material. We can actually incorporate all other characteristics in any flexible material. So, it is the most important property which determines how the fabric will perform when subject to wide variety of complex deformation during use. Suppose my cloth, my shirt when I actually move the fabric, the characteristics of the fabric is that it takes, it changes the shape according to my body movement. So, that makes my actually feeling it is comfortable. Otherwise, what will happen? the ability of a fabric to deform by shearing it is differentiate it differentiate from other thin material. So, that fabrics characteristics it is only uniqueness is that it is flexible and the it has got less shear stress. Okay. So, it can deform easily by shear that means whether it is a oven or not a knitted. Suppose, this is these are the warp yarn. Okay. So, weft yarn and this are warp yarn. Now, when we deform, when we apply force, okay, this yarns will get 
deform very easily very easily there will be because there is no actually positive binding. So, they will deform easily due to its inherent structure. Now, if it is asked instead of textile material instead of say oven fabric or knitted fabric, we use any polythene sheet. So, for any polythene sheet the we can incorporate any characteristics. Suppose, if you ask the polythene sheet in uh, if I am making a shirt from a polythene sheet, you may ask it is not say it is not permeable. So, I can incorporate permeability by punching the holes. Okay. Then one may ask that it is not that flexible. I can definitely have a polythene sheet with high flexibility. Even we can incorporate absorbency, we can incorporate everything we can incorporate, but one thing we cannot incorporate it is shear characteristics. Because the fab, the polythene sheet any other thin sheet material if even very flexible sheet material if we make uh, if we prepare our clothing that will have some other characteristics, but it will not be able to actually deform according to my body movement. So, that that makes the textile material unique. Okay. So, that is the characteristic which is known as shearing character shear characteristics. So, so conform it conf it does not conform those those other sheet material does not conform to the contour of the human body and that textile material only do that. So, it is difficult to measure. So, shear characteristics it is very difficult to measure because it is flexible. For any sheet material shear characteristics measurement it is not that difficult. Okay. It is basically when suppose there, there is a material any other material stiff material and we are gripping in this is the one grip point okay the material we are gripping now we will apply one force so with this uh, which is parallel to the base okay and with this force if there is any deformation suppose this is the deformation it is deformed then we can measure the the shear character this this theta the tan of this theta tan theta is the shear strain and we can measure the force to deform. So, then you can calculate the shear stress. So, but for textile material as it is very flexible the this type of measurement is very difficult. Okay. Now, so this is the simple shear for a simple shear parallel stress f is actually acting oppos in opposite direction that may this may be horizontal direction or may be vertical direction and where we can measure the deformation angle of deformation theta and tan theta is shear strain and f is shear stress. Here assumption is that the initial that area of rectangular shape okay, uh, material after deformation the area is same. So, here the g is the shear modulus we can measure calculate by the ratio of shear stress and shear strain. The g is nothing but the ratio of f by tan theta, but the main problem is with the textile material and to test shear characteristics of textile material we have to just we will use the same principle, but we will modify the setup. The modification here is that to for uh, if any textile material if we try to shear before shear due to its high flexibility this fabric will buckle. This buckling will take place. So, that buckling just to avoid this buckling prevent this buckling 
one vertical force is added applied extra vertical force W is applied. So, that the, the width wise there is no buckling this becomes straight. So, that extra force we have to apply in addition to F we have to apply an extra force just to have the W just to actually balance the W we have to apply extra force F dash which is equal to W tan theta when tan theta is the angle of shear and this force is due to W and then the force required for only shear the fabric we can calculate by subtracting this W tan theta from total force required F. So, this will be F minus W tan theta which is basically required to shear the fabric and this stress is expressed in terms of force per unit length of the fabric. So, if the this is the length and we can calculate. Now, what is shear hysteresis? Now, shear hysteresis is that so, suppose this is a fabric initial stage. Here at the initial stage although there is no prop positive binding, but one the fabric to so yarn to yarn the warp yarn to web to yarn this yarn to yarn friction will be there. Okay. This the shear force when it is actually deformed there will be frictional sliding. That means, suppose this is the force and what we are doing we are trying to deform. Okay. Now, this the due to that frictional sliding we need some force. So, that is called that is a shear stress we need shear stress just to have some frictional sliding between the yarn. Okay. The yarn will this is this initial form and after that this will actually this is in this sheared form. Okay. Now, that is how it is. So, this is a shear strain and here it is a shear stress. Shear stress. Okay. Now, this is okay. after that and we can calculate the shear modulus and other. Now, when once it is a coming back suppose after that deformation it is we are again trying to come back. So, in that case the when it is a shearing which is coming back it will not follow the same path. Here we have to have this will follow a different path due to the frictional locking of the of this yarn. Okay. Now, here the this is the and this difference is known as the shear hysteresis. Now, the hysteresis occur due to frictional force at the intersection point of warp and web. Okay. Now, where it is it is going and then it will come back and from this point again if we want to have without any uh, too much the shear strain we have to apply certain force. Okay. That is how it is uh, the curve is like this. The initial shear modulus is that shear that slope at the initial points if we take the slope measure the slope that is the initial shear modulus shear modulus at 0 shear angle what is that at 0 shear angle what is the shear modulus. So, the slope at point B and at point D if we take the slopes. So, we will get the shear modulus there will be two values. So, this will be the slope at uh, the shear at 0 point. So, this this two values we can take we can take the mean of this and also hysteresis at 0 shear angle. So, the difference between B the distance between B and D it is the hysteresis. So, from there we can calculate the shear hysteresis and which is basically due to the frictional contact. Now, shear can also be measured by biased extension. So, this technique this principle 
is used in fast instruments okay and the principle here is that we cut the fabric in the bias direction not in the along the warp or weft we cut the fabric in in 45 degree bias direction with warp okay now we will use this equation which is 1 by g equal to 1 by e 45 sorry 4 by e 45 minus 1 by this sigma 2 by e 1 minus 1 by sigma 1 by e 2. So, what are these values? G is the shear modulus of the fabric and E 45 is the Young's modulus at 45 degree. That means, at 45 degree suppose this is the fabric at warp wise there will be certain Young's modulus the, because the yarns are at parallel condition there, there will be high Young's modulus at wave direction also it will be higher because yarns are parallel, but <coughs> once we make we measure the shear modulus at say Young's modulus at certain angle that that means, at 45 degree angle the threads will have very less uh, modulus because it will deform very easily. So, that is so why E 40 and E 1 and E 2 are the Young's modulus in warp and wave direction. Now, if we see and that uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 these are the Poisson's ratio in warp direction and wave direction. So, the relationship is between the shear modulus the biased angle Young's modulus E 45 E 1 and E 2 and if we see that here the E 1 and E 2 will be much much higher than E 45. So, that is modulus at biased direction is it is very less because the threads will simply actually take their action because the shear stress is less ok. That is why in this equations as E 1 and E 2 are very high the initial English one we can eliminate this for simplicity we can eliminate this terms the second and third term in the equation the equation will be simplified for for all practical purpose we can use this that will be 1 by g equal to 4 by e 45 that is e for the g equal to e 45 by 4. If we can measure the Young's modulus at 45 degree angle and divided by 4 we will get the shear modulus. So, this is the equation. So, e 45 is equal to almost equal to 4 g ok. So, the sigma 1 sigma 2 are the points as they show and here we can calculate the young that the shear modulus of the fabric and the shear strain tan theta is related in the fashion like 2 e plus e square where e is the biased extension by the force t if we apply t force and then we will have the biased extension. So, that is tan theta you can measure. So, where it is a it is a infinitesimal it is very small ok infinitesimal train. So, that is e is very small if we take the e as a very small value uh, this e square will be small. So, that e square we can actually eliminate. So, this will be tan theta almost equal to 2 e ok. So, this value is 2 tan theta 2 e. So, if we measure the e biased extension value, so we can calculate the tan theta and f by 2 tensile force. So, that is tensile force by 2 which is the effective shear force. So, that shear force and uh, shear strain we can calculate using this uh, formula for very small deformation. We if we deform at higher value 
then there will be other this this equations will not be actually valid. Now, we will discuss another characteristics as I have mentioned which is actually linked with the shear and the bending characteristics okay, and which is drape and the drape the term used to describe the way a fabric hangs under its own weight. So, if we actually if we hang the fabric this fabric under its own weight how the fabric will get actually will hang will make some profile that shows the drape characteristics and it determines how good a garment will look. So, it is not only the garment for any other fabric like your cartons or any other fabric which actually requires a fall and that appearance is actually dependent on drape characteristics and it differs from fabric to fabric and depends on the end use which is important. The drape like strength a uh, textile material with higher strength means it is a better like uniformity which is more uniformity it is better that means, C B percent or U percent lower U percent is better, but here in drape we cannot see tell that higher drape coefficient higher drape value is better or not. Okay. So, that depends on the end use drape coefficient or drape value is just an indication we cannot tell the whether the fabric is good or bad that depends on the the end use of the fabric. Once, once we need the stiffer fabric that means, the, the drape will be different will be high drape and if we need a flexible fabric that will be lower drape. So, we cannot compare the, the value okay. we cannot tell that higher drape value is always good. A particular value cannot be classified as either good or bad. So, it depends on the end use like this is the drape okay. the, the it is a multi directional curvature which is formed okay, and which depends on shear and bending property. And if we take these two properties together then it forms a drape and which shows it is a look how the pleasant how pleasant the fall of the fabric will be. Now, the measurement is done by using the drape meter where this is the uh, fabric okay, fab fabric specimen without any with, with it is normal circular fabric specimen A 1 is the the total area of the specimen okay. we have cut the fabric and as it is flexible once we are placing the fabric with on a support disc of a certain known area A 2 then what will happen on its own mass the fabric will start hanging this fabric will hang and the projected area we can whatever projected area this is the this circle is the actual area of fabric a 1 a 2 is the the support disc and once we are hanging this will make a projection this a 3 is the shaded portion is the total projected the projection total shadow area by draped fabric okay. and the projected area is that a, a 3 minus a 2 a 3 minus a 2 is the which is actually projected from the support disc okay. and then if we know all this values because a 1 is known because we cut the fabric a 3 is a 2 is known because we know the area of the support disc only thing is that we have to calculate we have to measure the area of this 
area of this shadow and if we know that then we can calculate the drape coefficient. Drape coefficient d is a 3 minus a 2 a 3 minus a 2 means projected area divided by a 1 minus a 2 that means, the difference between the area difference of area between the actual fabric and the support disc. So, if we know these values and then we can calculate the drape coefficient. Now, as the fabric gets stiffer the drape coefficient will be high. Suppose, a fabric with a which, which is totally limpy it does not have any projected area. So, what will happen? The projected area that means, a 3 will be equal to a 2. Okay. A 3 will be equal to a 2 in that case. So, that this portion this a 3 minus a 2 will be 0. So, the drape coefficient for that fabric will be 0. Now, in place of fabric suppose we use cardboard. Okay. Cardboard means that a 3 will be equal to a 1. Okay a 3 will be equal to a 1 because there is no drape at all. So, a 3 is equal. So, a 1 is replaced a 3 is replaced by a 1 in that case if we see numerator and denominator become same. So, d value will be 1. So, that means, the for any for any practical purpose the drape value it is ranging from 0 to 1 for totally stiff fabric it is 1 the totally limpy fabric it is a 0. Okay. So, that way we can have knowing the drape coefficient value we can we can actually come to know whether the fabric is stiffer or not. Okay. Now, let us see the the principle of this instrument here actually from top uh, light beam is falling and if we calculate if we know and this is the type of shadow at the bottom there is a shadow this shadow we can trace and if we can measure the area and that area is actually from that area we can calculate the the drape coefficient. Now, the area measurement sometime it is very difficult. So, that if we can trace and we can cut the fabric and we take the mass and if we know the actual mass per unit area of the of play paper that from that we can calculate the area of the projected portion. Now, if we see the animation here this is the support disc okay. the step on when there is no fabric okay. and then we are trying to get the shadow of this support disc. this is the shadow of the support disc okay, that we know. Next is that the hanging the fabric we are now placing the fabric on it. We are placing the fabric fabric is hanging and now we are getting the shadow of the fabric. Shadow of the fabric and we are calculating the drape coefficient. Now, main problem with this system is that the light which is actually diverging and actual area whatever we are getting it is not the actual area of the fabric projected area it has been actually enlarged. This area is enlarged so that is why the sometime this gives error value depending on the length or distance from the light source. Okay. And what we can do to eliminate this problem we can have one system where light is not a diverging time light will be projected just exactly in parallel beam of light will be projected. Then we will get the exact value of the fabric area and that is done by the Cusick draft test, uh, drape tester. Okay. 
Cusick drape tester is that the shadow that the fabric cast is traced on a annular paper, where this is an annular paper and the shadow we actually whatever it is casting, it is the that shadow we are just cutting out. Now, this in this annular ring, this is paper of known mass per unit area. So, mass per unit area of the paper is constant and this inner it is whole. This is the size of the, the support disk, this is the support disk size and this is the size of the fabric. Okay. The size of the fabric and the shadow shaded portion we can trace and we can simply cut and then we can take the ratio and mass of the whole paper ring is taken and the shadow part is then cut out and weighed. So, first the mass is taken then shadow part is taken. Okay. Now, we we'll see and then let us compare with others earlier process. Now, if we take the mass of the whole paper that means, what we are trying to take a 1 minus a 2 a 1 minus a 2 that is denominator we have taken the total annular ring okay. and when we are taking the mass of the total shadow portion and this cut out this portion the shaded portion then what we are trying to take it is a a 3 minus a 2 okay. it is because this is the uh, the actual paper is annular this is a hole is there. So, this projected length projected area we are taking because the paper the mass per unit area is constant. So, the ratio of mass is showing the ratio of the area. So, here in this method if we simply take the uh, trace the shadow and take the mass then it will be perfected and this uh, the annular ring size is exactly as the size of the fabric because and size of the initial sample and as the, the light beam is projected a parallel light beam. So, there is no divergence. So, there is no extent that uh, the enlargement is not there. So, exact size is we can measure. Okay. Now, the principle is that the shadow that the fabric cast okay, is traced on a annular paper. So, this is the annular paper is placed here above this here, here it is a the support plate okay, support plate is here and the this area the annular the diameter of this annular paper is equal to the area of this support plate. Okay. Now, the paper mass per unit area is constant, mass of the whole paper is taken and thin shadow part is cut out and weight. Now, if we see the animation and before that let me explain here. Now, the light source is at the bottom and here it is a parabolic mirror. Okay it is a basically concave mirror is there and uh, from light source light is divergent different source light divergent light is falling and then it is basically it is parallel light is being actually reflected. And once it is a parallel light is reflected the this is the fabric profile and exact shadow of the fabric will be placed here. Okay and this exact shadow the, the paper the annular ring paper is placed on a glass support. So, why is it glass because it should be transparent. So, that it can light passes through and shadow can be is visible and we can simply trace okay. and there from there we can calculate the mass. Now, the light is actually falling, the fabric sample specimen is just behind the light, it is not direct light is falling. Now, it is getting reflected and parallel light is 
getting reflected. Okay. Now, as the light beams are exactly parallel, so that there is no divergence, the shadow we are getting here, we are tracing here, which is exact shadow of the fabric. And we take the difference uh, ratio of the mass, we will get the drape coefficient and expressed, we can express in terms of factor also or we can express in terms of percent by multiplying by 100. And three different specimen diameters is recommended. Okay. When the fabric drape coefficient is very small, so less than 30 percent, 24 centimeter for very limpy fabric, okay. for medium fabric is 30 centimeter, and for stiffer fabric, 36 centimeter. So, these are the various fabric sample diameters are given and then the drape coefficient we can measure. And the last part is that there is a relationship direct relationship diagram shows the relationship between shear stiffness, drape coefficient, drape percent and the bending length. Now, try to see one by one. Suppose a fabric is having 0 shear stiffness, this is the 0 shear stiffness. Okay at 0 shear stiffness, if the fabric bending length that, that is bending length means it is highly flexible, highly flexible and the imaginary there is a 0 shear stiffness, there is a in that case the drape coefficient will be 0. So, there that means it will simply fall as I have mentioned earlier 0 drape coefficient. Now, for say 0 shear stiffness, if we increase the bending length, we are increasing the bending length that means, drape coefficient will increase. Now, how do we achieve this type of situation? Now, let us assume a situation where we have a fabric, we have made a fabric with say rods highly polished, extremely polished rods we have placed okay. and this there is no friction, there is a zero friction, zero friction between the rods. In that situation imaginary if we apply force, so there will be no shear stress. So, that will this will simply slide, there is no shear stiffness, but as the rods there are rods. So, we can see we can assume the rods are highly stiff, that means there is a infinite stiffness, that means it will never bend. Okay. So, bending stiffness is very high, but shear stiffness is it is very low. In that case again the fabric will have 100 percent drape coefficient. Here the curve shows this picture shows that the fabric with say high infinite bending length that means, very high bending length and the shear stiffness even if it is 0, if we take the y axis then bending drape coefficient as the bending rigidity increases from say 0 to infinite, okay, then the drape coefficient will gradually increase. Similarly, suppose bending length is 0, bending length is 0 means the fabric bends, fabric bends easily, very simple, very flexible. But if we increase the shear stiffness gradually, that means there is no movement, the movement we are blocking. So, we can assume a fabric with zero bending length, highly flexible bending length, but there actually their movement has been blocked. 
Okay. So, if we take if we take a fabric with a very flexible fabric, highly flexible fabric, okay, but what we are doing we are actually knotting the this we are actually you can assume the fabric with highly flexible. So, there is no bending rigidity very flexible fabric, but what we have done we have put gums at each and every we have joined we have actually soldered this ends at this point. So, what will happen this will not have any shear okay. shear strain will shear stress will be high. So, in that case, but the, fab, the this fabric is highly flexible. So, in that case the fabric will have certain values of the drape coefficient. So, that is how this graph shows here the shear stiffness if we increase gradually even if the bending length is 0 still the drape coefficient will increase. So, that means highly flexible fabric will not result the 0 uh, very flexible very good look but very good fall in addition to the flexibility we have to incorporate the shear characteristics. If yarn cannot actually move past each other then there will be higher drape coefficient. So, the problem here to calculate drape coefficient is that projected area of uh, 330 centimeter diameter fabric specimen placed on 20 centimeter diameter support plate of drape tester is 302 centimeter square. Drape coefficient of fabric what will be the drape, drape, drape coefficient? That means, the, what is the projected area? Projected area is means the shadow area minus the area of the support disc, that is the projected area. Drape coefficient is known and the projected area is given, which is nothing but A3 minus A2, A3 minus A2, this is given, okay. this is given, and A1 is the fabric specimen, this 302, this is the 302 is the A 3 minus A 2 and diameter of fabric is given 30 and diameter of specimen holder is the 20. From there we can calculate the A 1 minus A 2. So, A 1 A 2 we can calculate. So, projected area A 3 minus A 2 is 302 directly given. The specimen area is cal calculated pi by 4 30 square that is pi by 4 900 square centimeter and area of support disc is calculated pi by 4 400 square centimeter and from there we can calculate the drape coefficient is 302 divided by the difference in these two areas. So, the drape coefficient is coming out to be 0.769 that is 76.9 percent is the drape coefficient. And in addition to this, there are standard techniques, the total systems of measurement of objective assessment of fabric handle. So, there are two instruments, set of instruments are available, commercially available, okay. and this those instruments, the set of instruments measures the low stress mechanical and surface characteristics of fabrics. These are the Kawabata evaluation system for fabrics, another is the fabric assurance by simple testing. And in this course, we will not discuss the detailed analysis or details of these instruments, we will just mention and in you will learn in the higher course there will be another course that is the advanced uh, testing of textile materials that, that course it is uh, these things will be discussed. And the principles are the correlation between the subjective assessment 
and corresponding mechanical measure measurable fabric properties are that the subjective assessment is the smoothness, firmness, fullness, crispness, hardness these are the subjective assessments of the fabrics and those can be correlated with the the objective assessments the low stress mechanical properties of fabrics okay the tensile characteristics tensile as shear characteristics bending strength bending not we are, what we are tra tra uh, doing here we will not actually the it is not uh, the high load will not be applied only the low stress mechanical characteristics will be evaluated here and the compression and surface characteristics will be measured and there are four modules in Kawabata system KESF 1 or FB 1 for measurement of tensile and shear characteristics, the model 2 for measuring the bending characteristics, model 3 measures the compressional characteristics and model 4 which measures the surface roughness and friction characteristics. So, these four modules are there and similarly, the first fabric assurance by simple testing which is developed by the by, by CSIRO Australia and there the it gives the objective indication of fabric handle characteristics and there are basically three series of three instruments and one test method. So, instrument one first one is the compression meter which measures the compressional characteristics of fabric and second one is the bending characteristics of fabric bending meter which actually works in the same principle of the Sarli instrument we have uh, expressed we have explained here first three measures the tensile and shear characteristics okay, that is extension meter and first four is nothing but one test method which is which measures the dimensional stability of fabric and also hygral expansion. Okay. So, this all this detail will will learn in other course and with this we will finish this course of evaluation of textile material and here we have discussed the all the characteristics for from starting from fiber loose fiber yarn fabric okay and we have now come to know that different evaluation technique and their implications how to actually interpret all this data okay that we have discussed hope this course will help you in your understanding in evaluation of textile material and till then thank you.